today I'm in a beautiful campground in Dry Wolf and Dry Wolf is about 22 miles south of Stanford, Montana. It's in the National Forest and this is a National Forest campground. But I have, I have a reason for bringing you out here today. Years ago I brought my daughter out here. She was about mm, 23 years old at the time. And it was uh, kind of a survival scenario. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to pass on to her the things that my father taught me as a young boy when I would go hunting with him, deer hunting. And we uh, just had a, a really great time. I, I taught her about building a debris shelter. Now, you got to understand, this is years ago before bushcrafting was a thing. But it was just survival. And uh, I taught her where to build a bush, uh, where to build a, a, a shelter, how to, you know, figuring where the wind was and where the wind was going to be later that evening when the, when the wind switched in the mountains, and how to build a fire safely, how to put a backstop to reflect the heat, uh, you know, how to look for water. But mainly I taught her about stopping and thinking and going over your steps that, that you had made to get that far and try to try to rehash what you did that day and try to put some compass, she had a compass with her, I says, try to put some compass bearings along with that and that'll give you a pretty good idea where you're at. But the big lesson came later. The big lesson came that evening. We already had snow on the ground to start. But that evening it started snowing, just lightly. The temperature dropped, but we decided just to, there was a road that, it wasn't snowing that hard, it was snowing lightly, but we decided there was a road that we wanted to go explore that we hadn't been up yet. And I had a suburban four-wheel drive. So we left camp and we went driving up this road and, you know, kind of explored it, went as far as we wanted to, and then we were starting to head back. And the temperature had dropped, it had been above freezing. The temperature dropped, and with that ice on the road, and with, you can see where I'm going with this, and where the, uh, and the snow on top of that, and the crown to the road, the car just drifted, not through driving, just through gravity, just slid over and into the barrel pit, or ditch as you call them elsewhere. And we were stuck four-wheel drive and all. The right front wheel was spinning and the left rear wheel was spinning and I didn't have a differential lock on, on the Suburban unless you buy the Z71 you don't get that but uh, we were stuck and it was getting dark. I, it was well past sundown as it was so that turned our little survival scenario into a real a real thing and what I had taught her earlier when we were just walking in the woods was to empty out your pockets and look at what you got and figure out what you're going to do and that's what we had to do that night we had to go through the car and figure out what it was we had and what we were going to do because we figured that there was nobody around and there was no cell service we figured that we'd be stuck there till somebody came along of course we got to busy getting ourselves unstuck because one of the things I had in the car was a folding trenching shovel military style and I had a, um, a bow saw I had a tarp I had chains in the back so what we did is my daughter immediately took the bow saw and started cutting branches to put underneath the tires I took that shovel and I started scooping out under the car because we were high centered and that little that little shovel did pretty good <laughs> but it was a lot of work and then I put the tarp down and I got the jack out and I started jacking up the left rear to put chains on the left rear and there was no way I was going to get them on the right front because that was down in the ditch but I was able to get chains on the one tire I said tire chain on the one tire and my daughter had uh, packed bows down in front of the right front tire and eventually, after a couple of hours of very hard work, we got out. Lucky for us! <laughs> the thing that you want to take away from this is to always have a survival kit in your car. You know I did a survival kit for ATVs on one of my previous videos. This is about having things in your car. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I carry in my car just every day because in Montana that's important. To begin with, especially in the winter time, I want to show you the core things that I carry. And, and to begin with, a sleeping bag or in this case a couple of wool blankets. These are always in my car, even in the summertime, because in the, in the night times up here in the north it can get kind of chilly. And you always want to make sure you got something to uh, help you get through the night. To go along with that, I've got a couple of emergency candles here. And these burn for like eight hours. And just one or two of these in your car putting out that constant heat will really help you get through the evening. A little fire started to boot. But basically, this is core. This is, this, this is something you've got to have. Then, of course, there's jumper cables. In case you just need a jump start, you might find somebody that stops by, but without these, you're still stuck. A tow strap, and I have used this numerous times, mainly in getting other people out, but this has gotten me out a couple of times, too. I'm a mechanic, so I carry tools. Uh, that's up to you. But uh, a basic tool kit, some screwdrivers, some pliers, a wrench, vice grips, WD-40. Anyways, these are something you could carry also. This, this has come in handy, uh, not just for me, but for other people that I've stopped on the side of the, by the side of the road and, and uh, they couldn't get their lug nuts off and uh, to change a flat tire. And uh, last time was out truly in the middle of nowhere in Utah and this helped. This is that folding shovel I was just talking about. Just a military one and this kind of really helps to, I won't undo it. Anyways, I always got this. I spend a lot of time on dirt roads up in the mountains, and this has come in handy. Also, just for uh, digging a fire pit or putting out fires. I usually carry, uh, sometimes, I'm uh, not usually, sometimes I carry a bow saw, which is pretty aggressive, but I make sure I at least always have some kind of saw. This is just for uh, cutting branches and things like that to get you unstuck, and uh, or just if you want firewood. Fix a flat first aid kit. I carry a I carry a rain suit, but you should at least have a poncho or something. You might be end you might have to change a tire in the pouring down rain. You don't know. Well, that's a basic kit. Even if you live in the city, you should think about what you carry with you at all times. I know I go over this with my granddaughters all the time about heading to school on a, on a sub-zero day with, uh, without proper clothes. Well, even if you're in the city, you need to think about that and always be kind of prepared, you know, and have, have proper clothing with you. Uh, you could be driving home from work and go and, uh, on late at night or something, you get off shift or something and, and get stuck on the way home in the middle of some industrial area where nobody's around and you could be in big trouble depending on uh, on the season so please think about that and always be prepared in case you were never a boy scout or girl scout be prepared <laughs> anyways if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share it and subscribe thanks a lot see you around <laughs>